Hey, what's up you guys? It's Ridge from Youngblood Reviews, and I'm here to do a book review for you today. And it is over a book that just, like, blew my mind. It blew my mind out of the water, and it was just amazing. And this author has become one of my favorite authors, maybe my top one favorite author. I don't know, but it was amazing, and it is... The Immortal Rules by Julie Kagawa, the first book in the Blood of Eden tril or series. It's a duology so far, and I think the next one is called The Eternity Cure. I'm pretty sure it is. But, oh my gosh, if you have not read it, which I'm pretty sure almost half of the world population has, go get it now. Like, you need to get in the car, go to Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, whatever. Go and get this book. It was amazing, pure amazing, five stars. Um, it was intense, and there was parts where I was, like, shaking on my bed, trying to read, and there was just intense scenes, and I was like, Ugh! and the love, and the love, um, basically when she falls in love with the person that it's introduced, it was just, oh, it was awesome. What really wanted, attracted me to this book at first was when I read the synopsis when this book first started, uh, first started getting a lot of press, um, uh, was the synopsis really got me was because it reminded me so much of a movie that I used to love and actually I still love it and I still have it if you haven't seen it it is called Daybreakers and it has Ethan Hawke and a bunch of other people in it and here it is Daybreakers is almost exactly like the Immortal Rules except the uh, in Daybreakers humans are almost extinct which is kinda like almost the Immortal Rules but um, Humans are treated as slaves in this one, and they're giving food. They're given food if they stay slaves. So basically, humans are they're blood cattle, you could say, blood slaves or whatever. But I will read you the inside synopsis to tell you what it's about. So bear with me; it's a really long, long synopsis. Allison, I can't pronounce her last name. It's like Sicamento, Sicamato, or something like that. Survives in the fringe, the outermost circle of a vampire city. By day, she and her crew scavenge for food. By night, any one of them could be eaten. Some days, all that drives Allie is her hatred for them, the vampires who keep humans as blood cattle. Until the night, Allie herself is attacked and given the ultimate choice, die or become one of the monsters. Faced with her own mortality, Allie becomes what she despises most. To survive, she must learn the rules of being immortal, including the most important. Go along enough with, with, without human blood and you will go mad. Then Allie is forced to flee into the unknown outside of her city walls. Then she joins a ragged band of humans who are seeking a legend, a possible cure to the disease that killed off most of humankind. And created the rabbits, the mindless creatures who threaten humans and vampires alike. But it isn't easy to pass for human, especially not around Zeke, who might see the past mon who might see past the monster inside her. And Allie soon must decide and must decide what and who is worth dying for. So, like the synopsis, this book is oh sorry, <laughs> knock on my DVD. Like I said, this book is intense and it's action packed. The first part starts out as her as a human, and basically it tells a how they have to scavenge for food, and basically how living in the fringe, which is like where all the unregistered live, and unregistered are people who um, are do not have a vampire owner, and they're basically living on their own, trying to survive. They're, they they uh, don't get much food, and they basically have to survive uh, with just like maybe a bite a day, which is pretty hard. Uh, so she goes outside of her of the city walls, which is dangerous because that's where the rabbits are. Rabbids are basically vampires who have no mindset and they are basically um they have no mind and they can't think and they all they think about is blood. That's all they want. So she has to go outside of the wall and she's trying to find food, but it gets really intense because she passes out at one point. And it gets really dark, and the rabbits are coming, and it's getting really intense, and you're, like, shaking, like, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen with Allison? What's gonna happen? Part two, which is where she's a vampire, and, um, uh, she meets her vampire creator, and I can't remember his name, honestly, uh, hmm, let me, let me look at it. I, I wanna see what his name was. Kanan. It was Kanan. Kanan is, uh, he's strong, he's... He's really brooding, and he's a very mysterious, and he has secrets, and you just don't know the secrets, but you're wanting to know, and 
at the end of part two, you do find out his secrets, and you do find out, like, he's in trouble with the law a lot, and he can't be seen, and you find out why at, like, the end of part two. And, uh, it, it's really intense, and then you meet this other guy who's really, really creepy, and he's a vampire, too. And he hates Kanan, and he almost, like, kills Allison, and it's, it's really intense at that point, too. Part three, uh, it was, um more intense, I could say, because that's when she meets all of her, uh, that's when she meets this band of, like, you can't call them thieves. I wouldn't call them thieves. They're more like people searching for a cure. That's basically what they are. They're trying to find the place called Eden, which is where they think is a safe haven for all humans, and that there's no vampires around. But what really got me was, like, Allison is traveling with them, and if you're wondering how she travels with them, they only travel during the night, and they sleep during the day, which I found really weird, and I was like, oh, okay, I, I guess that that's good for her. But what's really what's really got me is that they're gonna try to find Eden, and if it's a human safe, it's a human safe safe zone. What is Allison gonna do when she gets there and she's the first vampire to enter Eden? What if they check her? I mean, that's what I was thinking the whole time. I was like. What's going to happen if they check to see if she's a vampire or not? I mean, it's it's weird. But that's like at the end of the story. And you basically have to read it all to find out. But the end of the, the ending was very surprising. And the ending just had me on the edge of my seat. But anyway. While she's traveling in the desert. Which is basically she's traveling with the humans. But before she finds the band of humans. She encounters... She's encounters what she would call the thirst and the thirst is what she has to fight through the whole book and it's like how is she gonna do this she's in a band of humans how is she gonna find food uh it, it's really intense and in on how she finds food and it's really sad because she's trying to stay away from these humans that she's grown to love and to trust and especially zeke who is her love interest and she falls in love with zeke and it's just really hard for her to like, be around Zeke and not show her vampire side. It, it's really, really hard for her. But at the end, it's really intense, and you just need to go read it. If you haven't read it, five stars to Julie Kagawa's, uh, Julie Kagawa's Blood of Eden first book. Cannot wait for the second book. I wish I already had it in my hands, literally. But... Um, what was really good is that she went from fairy novels into vampire novels, and the transition was really cool. You did not even notice that she was transitioning from one supernatural creature to the next. Uh, so it was really, really awesome. And another thing that was really cool about the, or really kind of sad about this book, is humanity. Um, it's like a bunch of years in the future, so basically... They can't remember anything, and, like, they can't remember that there were museums or stuff like that. Museums are a thing of the past, and they're, they're banned because they were thought to be a part of creativity. That is another thing that got me, was reading in this world is banned. Like, books are banned. If you get caught with one, you're going to get executed. And I was like, I couldn't survive in this world. I would die. I need a book to sustain me, at least for a a little while, but that would kill me. I'm just saying, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you will agree with me that that would kill you too. But anyway, ugh. but anyway, it was a great book, five stars. Go and get it if you don't have it, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people already do. Go get it if you don't have it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. And I love the cover right here, and on the back it has uh, a really great saying. And then, even more awesome, it has the includes an exclusive excerpt from the next Iron Fae novel, which is called, uh, the, uh, can't remember. Anyway, it's gonna be good. I'm gonna look at that up. That's killing me. Gonna get it. The Lost Prince, which is in point of Megan Chase's brother, and it, it's bound to be a good book. I cannot wait to read it. And a lot of people have already got arcs of it, and I'm like, oh my gosh. <sighs> anyway, great book. Go get it if you don't have it. That is all for me this week, you guys. And uh, doing a lot of more stuff on my blog. And uh, the Immortal Rules 
uh, a review will be up for it on my blog if you want to go check it out. I've also done a review for Crank by Ellen Hopkins on there. Uh, I got really deep in that book. That book um, I finished in two days uh, or a day and a half. And I was going through it and it was really starting to make me sad. And I was like, my head was pounding from all of it and it was just intense. And uh, the next book and the other book I did a review for, I can't remember what it was. Uh, I think maybe it was a, a Ever Neath by Brody Ashton. So go check those out. Uh, I think that'll be, uh, I can't remember, I'm, I'm, if I did those good, just leave a comment on them if I did really good. I don't know whether I do do book reviews really good or not. It's all up to you guys. Okay, it, this is a 10 minute long video. I gotta go. See you later guys. I hope you have a great week.